Welcome to this special edition of Currents News. I'm Christine Persichetti. It's an historic day in the Diocese of Brooklyn as the Catholic community celebrates the installation of Brooklyn's eighth bishop, the most reverend Bishop Robert Brennan. Final preparations are underway and the doors of the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph are about to open to thousands of invited guests and well-wishers. 12 to 1400 guests are expected for the installation mass, including members of Bishop designate Brennan's family, 30 to 50 bishops and cardinals, many from visiting dioceses and three to 400 priests, deacons and seminarians. Religious orders will also be well represented. The Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Malta and the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulchre will all be in attendance, as well as the Apostolic Nuncio, the Holy See's ambassador to the United States. The installation officially begins with ceremonial rituals steeped in tradition. The new bishop will come to the door at the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph and knock. Auxiliary Bishop Raymond Chepetto, the Vicar General of the Diocese, will present the crucifix to Bishop Brennan, who will reverence it with a kiss. After hundreds process in, the nuncio, cardinals, Bishop Designate Brennan and Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio will follow, making up the remaining portion of the last procession. It's a history making moment that for Bishop Brennan is a homecoming of sorts. A native New Yorker, he served in the nearby Diocese of Rockville Center for nearly three decades. Now, as he prepares to take the helm in the Diocese of Immigrants, his ministry is coming full circle. Current News Jessica Easthope has a closer look at his life and his ministry. It's a beautiful gift, beautiful, beautiful witness. Columbus's loss see, is Brooklyn's gain. But the city streets won't take the new bishop designate much getting used to. Robert Brennan is a New Yorker. One thing about coming back here is I know how I'm back in a place where people speak properly. <laughs> Born in the Bronx and raised in Lindenhurst on Long Island, the Diocese of Rockville Center used to be home. I feel at home here. I grew up on Long Island. If you, if you live on Long Island, um, you're, you're part of the city of New York, right? Your, your life is also partly split. Um, here in the city, whether it be Brooklyn, Queens, or in the boroughs of the Archdiocese of New York. When the bishop was a boy, he attended Our Lady of Perpetual Help School in Lindenhurst and St. John the Baptist Diocesan High School in West Islip. After high school, he had his first brush with the Diocese of Brooklyn as a college student at St. John's University in Jamaica, where he earned a degree in mathematics and computer science. There's a way of thinking in mathematics. There's a way of logic. Is a way of kind of working your way through a, a proof, for example. Um, it's based on truth. The more you delve into the truths of these human subjects, the more you encounter the reality of God. After college, he solved a big equation in his life. His love of education plus his devotion to God equaled joining the seminary at Immaculate Conception in Huntington. He was eventually ordained a priest and then became an auxiliary bishop there years later. Then in 2019, he became Bishop of Columbus, a home away from home he'll miss dearly. I wasn't thrilled at first. I, I've only been in Columbus for two and a half years. We started a planning process. People um, were excited about working together. And so my first reaction was, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not ready to leave this. And to tell you the truth, I became very attached. But he says in a short time, he already loves Brooklyn. Jessica Easthope, Currents News. Bishop Designate Brennan has had a long and accomplished journey on his road to the Diocese of Immigrants, and it all started right next door. He was ordained a priest in Rockville Center in May of 1989. In 2002, Father Brennan went on to serve as the Vicar General and moderator of the Curia. In 2012, he was ordained an auxiliary bishop for the Diocese of Rockville Center. And in 2019, he was installed as the head of the Diocese of Columbus, Ohio. When Bishop Brennan begins his ministry in Brooklyn, ongoing COVID concerns, immigration, vocation building, and a solid Catholic education will be just some of his priorities. It's a job that requires close collaboration with the Archdiocese of New York. I sat down with New York Cardinal Timothy Dolan to talk about Brooklyn's new shepherd, who Bishop DiMarzio called the perfect choice to succeed him. Well, look, the Pope appointed him, so it's got to be the perfect choice. <laughs> but I would agree. You know, when Bishop DiMarzio, look, this is a complicated process, and both Bishop DiMarzio and I were asked for names and all. And uh, even though you, you keep that very, uh, very confidential and you don't walk around talking, obviously I thought I need to talk to Bishop DiMarzio about this, and he wanted to talk to me. And as we, as we dreamt about people, 
uh, you know, you, you, as we described what we needed, when the Holy Father appointed Bishop Brennan, I said, wow, they listened to us. Because you've got a, a go- you got another street priest, okay? You got another hard worker. You got another guy that just basks in the company of, of a people. He's a natural, so we got good things coming. And I would reckon that, and I bet him a bowl of of, uh, of a pasta, that he's going to work uh, closely with Bishop DiMarzio because he's a shrewd guy and says, I I need that wisdom. I need that energy. So. So now that it's official, what do you think is the first thing Bishop Brennan should focus on? Any, any wise bishop, and he's a wise one, will say, instead of focusing on issues, I need to focus on the folks. So, and he's already said that. He said, I just got to get around. I got to spend six months to a year getting around, listening to people, meeting people, sitting down. Let them tell me the issues. Let them tell me what's on their mind. Let them share with me their fears. Let them share with me their criticisms of the church, because there are many, and I need to hear that, and I need to say to them, I'm not threatened by this, and you can come to me anytime. So that's probably what he's going to do. How do you plan to work with Bishop Brennan to to face the challenges you face? Well, I don't think it'll be new, because as as I mentioned to you, I have enjoyed working closely with Bishop DiMarzio, and that'll continue. Uh, I'll look to him as a brother bishop. I'll look to him as a partner in the tremendous ministry of this, of this capital of the world, as Pope St. John Paul II called New York. So you know what? Even if I didn't want to, I'd have to work closely with him, but I want to. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Any, anything interesting about him that you could tell us that maybe we all don't know yet? He's just a remarkably friendly, simple, and I use that in the biblical way. I use that as Jesus encouraged us to be a, a, a simplicity. A childlikeness. He doesn't want us to be childish, but he wants us to be childlike. And Bishop Brennan would have that. You'll often see Bishop Brennan when we're discussing a, a thorny topic. I'm talking about when he was back at the uh, as the auxiliary in Rockville Center. When I would ask his opinion, you'd kind of see him just kind of get very pensive and just kind of slowly ponder before giving an answer. And that impresses me. He's not a he's not a know-it-all. He's not a man with all the answers. I think we got a pro. Cardinal Dolan says Bishop Brennan's challenges include getting people back in the pews and a need to reinvigorate parish life after COVID. When the news was first announced, Bishop Brennan sent a video message to the priests of Brooklyn calling on their help as he enters his new role. If you will be patient with me, I promise to give you my all. I have a lot to learn from you, the priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn from your wisdom and your experience. I need your help. He also commented on his time in the Diocese of Columbus, calling their collaboration a source of strength and joy. Catholics in the Diocese of Brooklyn got their own introduction to their soon-to-be bishop right after the announcement. It came as a surprise to some when he was at the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph for the feast of St. Michael the Archangel. In honor of the patron saint of police officers, the NYPD and Commissioner Dermot Shea happened to be in attendance, as well as other parishioners and priests. The Diocese of Rockville Center has given Bishop Brennan a big welcome back, remembering his decades-long service to the faithful there and the very place where he began his ministry as a priest. Jessica Easthope has more. The Diocese of Rockville Center is rejoicing. One of their own is back in New York. For more than 50 years, Bishop Robert Brennan called the diocese home. Now those who know him best are calling him the right man to be bishop of the Diocese of Brooklyn. Bishop Brennan is saying, yeah, this is going to be where the Holy Spirit wants me to be. Monsignor Jim Vaughn and Bishop Brennan knew each other long before they discerned their calls to the priesthood in high school at St. John the Baptist in West Islip. Monsignor Vlaan says though he'll miss Columbus, he knows Bishop Brennan will serve Brooklyn with his whole heart. There is that certain missionary spirit that says, yes, Lord, I will do what you ask. Here's where I have the commentary. Bishop Bill Murphy met Bishop Brennan years later at St. Agnes Cathedral when he was installed as the Bishop of Rockville Center. Bishop Brennan, his auxiliary bishop and secretary, then vicar general and moderator of the Curia. The two were side by side for 16 years. He just brought a fresh look to everything. And he has, he was a very wise counselor for me. 
But Bishop Murphy says the man he affectionately calls Bob showed his true colors when important titles didn't stop him from following his ministry. He asked to be assigned to a parish as a pastor. That's the kind of a man I want to have in a leading position because he's a priest to his core. As for the people who look to him as a spiritual leader, they're telling parishioners in Brooklyn, you're the lucky ones now. He was just terrific and he helped me through some bad times that I had. He always had time for everybody, no matter what he was doing. He will help the people of Brooklyn and they're just absolutely very, very lucky to have him. Church officials in Rockville Center say Bishop Brennan's biggest challenge will be the same one all priests face, to evangelize, but he's the person to take it on. In Rockville Center, Jessica East Hope, Currents News. When this special edition of Currents News continues, my interview with Bishop Brennan to talk about his plans for the Diocese of Immigrants and how a solid Catholic education will be one of the cornerstones of his ministry. Plus, we'll tell you a little bit about the Bishop Designate's new coat of arms. Stay with us. More on the installation of Bishop Robert Brennan is coming up. Welcome back to our special coverage of the installation of Bishop Robert Brennan. Retiring Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio says Bishop Brennan is the right choice to lead the Diocese of Brooklyn into the future. Kurtz News asked him if he had any advice for the bishop designate. He said no. Well, any advice he wants, I'll give him, but I'm not giving him any, any free advice. Let him ask for things. I don't want to really direct what he does. Well, he's a New Yorker, number one. That's a helpful, you know, he, know, he knows the area. Not afraid of New York. Some people come, they would be overwhelmed. This big urban diocese we have, which is very, very difficult to deal with. So I think he's um, he did very comfortable in coming here, so that's a good sign. Bishop DiMarzio plans on staying in the Diocese of Brooklyn and said that he will always be available to answer any questions at any time. On the day Bishop Brennan's appointment was announced, he hit the ground running, learning about the Diocese of Brooklyn and the people in it. I had the opportunity to sit down with him on that busy day. I began by asking him how it feels to be coming home to New York. It's exciting, it's exciting. Um, I have to say that there's a little bit of a sense of sadness leaving Columbus. I really came to love the Diocese of Columbus the, um, and I'm going to miss people there an awful lot, but uh, it, it is nice to be back uh, closer to family. Um, I'm fairly familiar with the Diocese of Brooklyn as a neighbor, and I know that it's a wonderful, wonderful church here, a very vibrant church, and I look forward to being part of it and to serving it as your bishop. As of 2008, the Diocese of Columbus had close to 300,000 Catholics. The Diocese of Brooklyn has 1.5 million. So how do you prepare to be the shepherd of such a large flock? I always used to say in Columbus that um, I came from a diocese, Rockville Center, with 1.5 million Catholics in two counties to a diocese with 300,000 in 23 counties. And uh, now it's back to 1.5 in two counties. So. Uh, I have a little bit of a familiarity with that kind of density, although I also understand that we're in 180 square miles, so we're packed in tight around here, and that's, that's exciting. And how are the dioceses the same? What did you learn there that you'll bring here? What's the same is that God's people are good, God's people are generous, God's people are holy, and there's just a level of faith and love for God that motivates everything we do. What's the only thing that's constant is the real presence of Jesus Christ. You know, all of us, we realize, I realize this very humbly, um, that we come and go. So, you know, I'm but a passing memory in Columbus, be, uh, much to my surprise. But the real presence, the, the real permanence is in Jesus Christ. And I just love the way they celebrated the life of faith in Columbus, and I know that I'm going to love the way that we celebrate the life of faith here in Brooklyn, Queens. The Diocese of Brooklyn is known as the Diocese of Immigrants. We have masses said every day in 33 different languages, and while we celebrate that, what will you do to unify the people? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure I need to do an awful lot to unify all the people. I think that there's already this tremendous sense of unity 
in, in the faith. Um, I think that Bishop Damasio and the bishops before him and the, all of the uh, priests and deacons and staff, the religious have done, and, and lay people have just done an, a, a remarkable job of that unity. So my job is really to continue to encourage it, to build on that, to celebrate it. Um, we've got some really good things. Again, just as what's the same between Columbus and Brooklyn is what keeps us together in our 33 different languages, the real presence of Jesus Christ, the love of God who created us in his own image and likeness. How important is communication in evangelization? It's essential. I mean, it, the word evangelization is communication. It's communicating the good news of Jesus Christ, co communicating um, it, the, the gospel. So communication will be key. Across the country, fewer people are going to church. I know you had a program in your diocese called Real Presence, Real Future, a listening program. How will you get people back to the church? Well, in Columbus, and, and this is part of the sense of loss, we had just undertaken that program, Real Presence, Real Future. And it's a, uh, it's a program of planning, long-term planning for the future of the diocese. Um, now, Columbus has its own needs. Brooklyn, Queens, we have our own needs. So the first thing I need to do is, is to learn. But Real Presence, Real Future in Columbus was about listening. Now we're about to begin here the synod process. So the, uh, I'm going to walk in. Bishop Damasio was telling me some of the things that are being contemplated here. It works very, very well with my arrival. So I'm going to come in and have the gift of being able to hear from God's holy people in um, the different deaneries, the 22 deaneries that comprise the Diocese of Brooklyn. We want to get to know you a little. Tell us, what do you do in your spare time? You know, what are you excited for here in New York City? I'm glad to be closer to my family. Um, although a couple of my friends have already texted me this morning and said it's probably about uh, the same distance to get there, uh, same time to get there by driving as coming by plane from Ohio <laughs> with the traffic. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. <laughs> but um, I'll be more family centered kinds of things um, and um, one of the things I did miss was the ocean and love to be down by the ocean again. Bishop Brennan's experience will help him minister to the people of Brooklyn, especially in particular areas of concern. He is a vocal advocate for racial justice. Following several shootings in Columbus, he encouraged the faithful in his diocese to hold discussions on racism. During his time with the Diocese of Rockville Center, he worked closely with the immigrant Latino community, calling their faith a source of inspiration. He is also a major proponent of Catholic education. He serves on the board for the Institute for Catholic Schools at his alma mater, St. John's University, and he previously served on the USCCB's Committee for Catholic Education. Bishop Brennan plans to make education a top priority. After years of decline, there's some good news in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Enrollment is up for the current school year. Once it was announced that he would be taking over for Bishop DiMarzio, the bishop designate visited several diocesan schools to signal his support. Applause rung out at St. Savior Church as their high school and Catholic Academy students met Bishop designate Robert Brennan. I was like, that's going to be so cool. Nathaniel DeRoy was a fan, especially when the bishop designate talked about his commitment to schools. So I really love that part, especially, but I, I like how he had a little sense of humor as well. Bishop Brennan putting that commitment front and center, making this school visit one of his first stops in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Already impressed by Futures in Education, which provides financial relief to families who need it the most. We're very fortunate that people um, do invest so heavily in our schools. It, it, it makes the opportunity of Catholic school available across the board. It's not just to a small few. Bishop Brennan is a product of Catholic education himself. He's also on the USCCB's Committee for Catholic Education. He calls schools an important place where one encounters Jesus Christ, a sentiment vicar for Catholic schools Monsignor David Casado shares. The easiest and the best way to pass on the faith is through Catholic education. It opens up an opportunity for a young child from, from when they're very small until they're in high school to really experience the faith. 
The bishop designates outspoken commitment to schools thrilling for superintendent of schools Thomas Chadzuko. He's ready to hit the ground running. I think we need to look at teacher salaries, principal salaries, uh, finding new ways to bring in money into the academies, grants, development, things that we've been working on, but an accelerated approach. Bishop Brennan also met with students who are studying for the priesthood, making a stop at the Immaculate Conception Center in Douglaston, Queens. The college seminary there is also known as the Cathedral Seminary House of Formation. Still to come on this special edition of Currents News, the national correspondent for the Tablet and Crux, John Lavenberg, joins us to talk about his trip to the Diocese of Columbus, where church officials spoke about Bishop Brennan's impact there. And the bishop designate will have a new coat of arms as the diocese's new shepherd. Some insights about the new crest coming up next. When a priest becomes a diocesan bishop, he must choose a coat of arms and a motto that combines his personal crest with that of the diocese. Bishop Brennan, already a bishop, has chosen a new coat of arms to reflect his new diocese. Every coat of arms is comprised of multiple elements that are divided into sections. The shield, which is the most important feature, its charges, a motto, and the external ornaments. Bishop Brennan's new coat of arms incorporates elements from Brooklyn that include red and blue quarters separated by a yellow cross, the upper left for the counties of Kings and Queens represented by two crowns, and the wavy bars below for the name of the sea city. The red scallop shell in the middle is to honor St. James the Great titular head of the Cathedral Church of Brooklyn. The right side of the shield is reserved for Bishop Brennan's personal arms. The blue cross, similar to a fleur-de-lis, and white star at the bottom symbolizing the Virgin Mary. The lamb's head, similar to that of Rockville Center in honor of his time spent there. And the two scallop shells at the top for two different saints, John the Baptist and James the Greater. Bishop Brennan's motto remains the same as his time in Columbus, Thy will be done, taken from the Lord's Prayer. To learn more about Bishop Brennan's new coat of arms and the symbolism behind his choices, you can check out this week's edition of The Tablet. John Lavenberg, the national correspondent for The Tablet and Crux, was in Ohio right after Bishop Brennan's announcement and joins us now to talk about the impact he's had on the Diocese of Columbus. Hi, John. So nice to see Hi, you. Hi, Christine. Great to be with you. So when you were in Columbus, you spoke with church officials there about the impact Bishop Brennan had there. So what did they tell you? So, you know, he came to the diocese in 2019 with a lot that he wanted to accomplish, and he was able to accomplish a lot in that short time. He expanded Hispanic ministry in the diocese, expanded campus ministry. He visited every parish. And so they really talk about his tireless work ethic that he brought to the diocese that inspired both lay people and priests to really get a lot done and work for the Catholic parishioners in Columbus. And as we reported earlier, Bishop Brennan's very committed to Catholic education. So can you tell us a little bit more about the special connection he had with the Catholic students there in the diocese? Certainly. And, you know, the two words that come to mind uh, thinking about Bishop Brennan and his work with students is invested and present. Hmm. He was always present with them at schools. He'd visit them during classes. And, he, and then also he'd always make it um, an event for students and their families going to games, going to concerts, things like that. So he was really invested in the students there in their education and wanted to be there for them at all times. Oh, I'm sure they're sad to see him go. So what has been the reaction uh, about the news of his departure to the diocese there? You know, the reaction to him leaving, everyone's very sad mm -hmm. to see him go. He was there, he got there in 2019. With the pandemic, that's really a short amount of time he was there. So they're very sad to see him go, but they're also very happy for him that he gets the opportunity to come to a diocese as big as Brooklyn to go back east where his family is. Um, so it's, it's both happy and sad, but they're really excited for him. All right, John Lavenberg, National Correspondent for the Tablet and Crux. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all your reporting. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right. And for more on Bishop Brennan's installation, just head to the Tablet website at thetablet.org for more in-depth reporting and full coverage. And stay right here. Live coverage of Bishop Robert Brennan's installation is coming up at the top of the hour. We'll end this program with a look back at some of Bishop Brennan's memorable moments as Bishop designate. And I'll see you again in just a bit.